Hi everyone, I'm David Reeder, and coming off a very, very busy weekend of swimming around the world, there's a lot to talk about. Right here, right now, the week that was. Over the weekend, Great Britain held its official national championships, but not a selection meet since, of course, England, Scotland, and Wales will all compete separately at the Commonwealth Games next month. The headliner, shocker, Adam Peaty, who put up a time of 58.78 in the 100 breast, and we're pretty sure that's the fastest 100 breast ever recorded before April 1st. But hey, there are a lot of things Petey has accomplished in sprint breaststroke that no one else has ever done. Petey is targeting the Commonwealth Games for Team England, and Operation 56 has commenced. Yes, that's his quest to go under 57 in the 100 breaststroke. The Cal men won the Pac-12 title over the weekend, beating Stanford by some 200 points. The Cardinal actually edged the Bears in a, duel, in a duel meet two weeks earlier, so this was a measure of revenge. Andrew Seliscar came up big for Cal. He won the 200 breast in 151.30 and the 400 IM in 338.65. All of this after he missed the summer season with an injury. Zeng Kwa posted a new meet record in the 200 fly, 140.24, and Nick Norman became Cal's first ever conference champion in the mile. Two and a half weeks from now, the Bears will go for their first nas national title since 2014 and they have the country's deepest squad, so they have a real shot of dethroning Texas. USOC CEO Scott Blackman announced his resignation this week. Blackman stated the reason for his departure was his health. He has been battling prostate cancer and he didn't attend the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, but he's also come under fire for his handling of sexual misconduct cases in gymnastics and in swimming. By mishandling, we mean he just didn't do anything. Suzanne Lyons, a USOC board member, will serve as the interim CEO while a permanent replacement is being sought. This weekend, the Tier Pro Swim Series continued in Atlanta, and how can you not start by talking about Taylor Ruck? The 17-year-old from Canada took down Sarah Schostrom in the 100 free, won the 200 back, 200 free in quick succession, and she touched out Olivia Smoliga by 1 100th to win the 100 back. Ruck's times, 53-37 in the 100 free, 206.36 in the 200 back, 156.85 in the two free, and 59.13 in the 100 back. So yeah, she's looking ahead to a very big Commonwealth Games next month in Australia. Meanwhile, Wang Jianjiahe, a 15-year-old from China, put up times of 818.09 in the 800 free and 403.14 in the 400 free. Elsewhere, Showstrom put up a time of 56.62 to win the 100 fly. Molly Hannis won the 100 breast in 106.09 and Chase Kalish went 408.92 in the 400 IM before doubling up with wins in the 2 fly and 2 IM on the final night. The Texas pros had some rest for the Atlanta meet, and several, several of them swam some very nice races. Madison Cox won the both IMs, Andrew Wilson won both breaststrokes, and Jack Conger took home wins in the 100 fly and 200 free. Australia picked its team for next month's Commonwealth Games and two females emerged out of trials looking like potential stars. One familiar, one not so much. Kate Campbell is back in top form after she skipped the World Championships last year. At trials, she won the 100 free in 52.37, the 50 fly in 25.47, and the 50 free in 23.79. Both those 50s new Australian records. Then there's 17-year-old Ariane Titmus who set a new Australian record in the 400 free at 402.36, she also added wins in the two free at 155.76 and the eight free at 820.08. Definitely worth keeping an eye on Titmus these next few years. Real quick on the men's side, Mitch Larkin had three wins and Kyle Chalmers showed he's back in form. He won the 100 and the 200 free. All right, that's our show for today. Looking forward to seeing everyone back here next week. I'm David Reeder. We'll talk to you then.